And I ask you, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me new. I turn to you now. The Bible says that God has loved you with an everlasting love. Do you realize that the infinite being, the creator of the universe, possessing every good quality there is to have to its maximum extent, God is not just good, he is goodness. God does not just love, he is love. God does not just give peace, he is peace. God does not just give life, he is life. And this being, this loving, powerful, wise being who created and formed you who created and formed this world has an opinion of you and that opinion of you is that you are worth dying for I don't care what anyone thinks of me I care what God thinks of me and he says I've loved you with an everlasting love meaning there is nothing you could ever do to make God love you any less. And there's nothing you could do to make God love you anymore. He already loves you as much as it's possible for Him to love you, and it is with an everlasting love. You say, I have all these problems. I have to fix this. I have to repent of that sin, or, or I've not been living right. I, there was a call on my life, or I, I have to get my house in order. You don't have to get your house in order. You just have to open the door. You say, I have to clean myself up. I have to prepare things. For you don't have to clean yourself up. You just have to open the door. You may say, I have doubts. I have questions. I don't even fully understand it. You don't have to fully understand it. You just have to open the door of your heart and Jesus will come in and make himself real to you. He's made it so easy. You don't have to do anything but open the door. Only you can open that door. Only you can turn to him and say, Lord, I surrender. I give you my life. Do you want to know what the gospel is? Do you want to know what the message is? I'll simplify it for you. One sentence. Jesus will give you his eternal life in exchange for your temporary one. All you have to do is say, I'm not God, you are. I can't explain it, but I can open the door. I don't understand it, but I can open the door. I don't, I don't really know if I'm confident in my ability to walk with him, but I can open the door. Some of you aren't turning to him. Some of you aren't opening the door because you feel like it's not something I could really carry out. It's not really something I could commit to. But listen, I trust not in my ability to be faithful to him. I trust in his ability to be faithful to me. You may not be able to do it. That's right. None of us can. But God can through us. So what do you have to do tonight? You simply have to open the door. Even now as I'm talking, you're sensing this drawing, you're sensing this pull on you. You know that there's something to what I'm saying. Never mind your intellectual arguments. They will fall apart and fail once Jesus has introduced himself to you. Never mind your doubts, your fears, your reservations. They'll melt away in the presence of Jesus. He's the cure. He's the answer. You may say, I can try another path. Maybe I'll open the door to someone else. John chapter 14, verse 6 Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. 
It's not through Allah. It's not through Buddha. It's not through Krishna. There's only one God, and his name is Jesus. There is no other way. Listen, I know that in our culture, it's not popular to say that, but I'll say it until I die. There is only one way to heaven, and that's Jesus. Only one way. So you might want to, you might want to, in your heart, open the door to something or someone else. You might say, I might open the door to a relationship. I might open the door to a career. I might open the door to all that this world offers, but the scripture asks the rhetorical question that is powerful. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world, yet lose his own soul? Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Let him in. I'm going to explain to you what's happening here. All the God is on your life. The gifts and the call are without repentance. You have not lost the call of God on your life. Though you've fallen away, you've not lost the call of God on your life. Even now, the power of the Holy Spirit is consuming your very being. Lift your hands. Jesus, let your fire consume him now. Come on, church, stretch your hands forward and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep praying, keep praying. on you right now heat this is an overwhelming of it it's heat and it's just everything is touch him lord thank you thank you lord thank you lord it's all over him i really do see a call of god on him now let me explain what's going on here you that are up here all of you up here listen 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 i want to explain what's happening prayer doesn't save anyone Only Jesus saves. Prayer does not save you. So you're not going to be able to just pray a prayer and everything be okay. God will forgive you. God will put his Holy Spirit in you, yes. But this one prayer is not the end. It's not the finality. It's not salvation in and of itself. This prayer you are about to pray is just the beginning. It's only the start. You have to be willing to say, Lord, from this point on, I give it all to you. Lord, from this point on, I turn to you. This is only the starting point. Now, after today, there'll be things you have to cut away. There'll be things that have to change. And the Bible tells us that God sends his Holy Spirit to help us. The Holy Spirit is basically Jesus in you. And as a Christian, you talk to God through prayer when it first start, when you first begin, you'll talk to God through prayer and he'll talk to you through the word. But you need to get into the word. And you need to find a place where you can grow and you can commit and you can be a part of a community of believers because it will strengthen your faith. And then God wants to use your life to touch others. God wants to use you to impact those around you. You see, when you get saved, you get to go to heaven. But when you get anointed, others get to go too. And he's going to use your life. But this is not some commitment you make out of emotion. This is not something you just do because, oh, I felt like doing it. It felt good. This is something you do between you and God. And no matter who walks that path with you, you say, Jesus, even if no one else follows you, I will follow you. Jesus, even if everyone turns their back on me, I will never turn my back on you. And God will be with you. God will be with you. But today is the turning point. Today is the day where you say, no more. I'm turning from my selfish ways, and now I turn to Jesus. This is not a prayer you're praying just out of repetition 
This prayer itself is not going to save you. Only Jesus will save you. But he will come and save you in response to you turning to him and saying, Lord, I'm opening the door. So just all across this room right now, just lift your hands if you're at this altar. And everyone else, stretch your hands toward these praying. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. And I ask you, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me new. I turn to you now. And I open the door. I surrender. I give you my life. My hope is in you. I believe by faith you are the Son of God. I believe by faith that your death purchased my life and cleansed my sins. And I believe that you rose again from the dead proving who you are. I give it to you now in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now one more thing I want to do. All of you standing up here, can you just face all the people looking at you real quick? Turn around. Can we welcome them to the family of God? church. These are souls that have been saved. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.